Johnny, uh, just the mix of emotions from the highs of Brinson's home run, I guess, to giving up the two out hit in the 10th. We just discussed, you know, the way the trajectory of the game went. Yeah, uh, obviously lose Homer was huge um, because it, you know, really kind of, um, you know, you don't want Sandy to, you know, the game that he was able to throw, you don't want that to be hanging on him. And the game that you don't score, obviously lose Homer, though, got us back in it. Uh, you know, and then the guys did a nice job of giving us some chances to to score, and you know, we just weren't able to do it. Jordan. Yeah, hey there, Donnie. With Sandy in that fourth inning after he gives up the leadoff home run, for him to be able to limit it to just that one run after getting runners on second and third with one out, just can you walk me through your reaction to that and just seeing him being able to battle like that? Yeah, he had to battle today too. That was not one of those that was easy for Sandy. Uh, seemed like he was leaking balls early in the game. He didn't seem to be able to to stick the four seamer, and, and like Mel says, he didn't wasn't getting his hand on top of it. Um, but after that, he kind of settled in and was able to get his arm up. Uh, you seen the action on his ball was different. Uh, and then to, you know, get out there for the seventh, basically, and, and still his stuff was really good. So, um, you know, again, Sandy on a day that he has to battle, he gives up one. And then we kind of pick him up, pick him apart a little bit because he wasn't as good as you, you think he can be. So obviously Sandy, you know, threw the ball really well. To, to be able to, or he had to really fight to get where he got today. Uh, and on that note, I think this is the third time that, in third consecutive start with Sandy, that we've said that he either had the battle or wasn't his best and was still doing this. Just what do you think it's going to take those one or two little things to get him back to the Sandy that we've seen over the last couple of years? Well, I mean, obviously, I think we're still getting great at Sandy. And I think what you're seeing is that when he's facing teams, you know, they know who they got you know, they knew who they're matched up against. So you're going to have teams fighting and fighting and fighting to, to try to get to this guy. And so, you know, they know he's one of the top guys as far as who they have to deal with. So you're getting everybody's best effort and they're going to try to fight with Sandy. Uh, it's not like it's a guy they don't know anymore. Uh, it's, it's getting to be a guy that I think they know is, is deep in the game. He's got power stuff and, and different with different combinations and change up the slider four into two so you know you're getting a lot of i think he's getting a lot of battles because they know you know they know who they're dealing with let's go back to christina when milwaukee scores one run but not you know more how does that affect i guess the strategy you approach with the bottom of the 10th yeah that's the one that you kind of kick yourself with for me it's like you look back and say well i should have did, did it the other way um, I really feel like that East on at that point is going to put this guy in play uh, in, in a good chance it's going to be on the right side. And that's kind of where you kick yourself. Where do you play for one and play for the tie, or do you, you feel like you can do it the other way and take three shots and, and go for the win? And, again, it's one of those you make your choice and then – you know, afterwards, if it doesn't work, it's not one. It's one of those you don't you don't like the result and you think differently. Well, real quick with that, um, with that strategy, does it come into mind like we're playing so many games in a row without a day off? Need you know you don't want to overtax the bullpen more than it maybe has been just because there's three starters in the rotation. No, no. Part you know part of it is you want to make sure Aggie gets pitched to. You feel like if you if you get him over there and you use Aggie right there, he's not going to get swing the bat. So part of it is like, what do you, what position, taking your chances, then you're going to ask, you know, Bert uh, to drive in that run and put the ball in play. And so we know the guy's like kind of a high four seam, kind of a pop up with the with up and down. So it's like, you know, part of my thinking is make sure Aggie gets a chance to swing the bat. And again, and it's one of those that no matter if it doesn't work, I'm going to be like thinking I should have went the other way. Ethan? Thanks, Jason. Don, you talked about <clears throat> the way Sandy's battled. And he said before the season he wants to go to 200 innings. So that battling, that going over 100 pitches to get to seven innings, does that say to you, like, this guy can absolutely do it? 
Uh, well, um, can he do it? Absolutely. It's not something that we're looking, trying to get him to at all. Um, and, and I think today's the second time he's been over 100, and it's, been, it's barely over 100. So we're, we're not trying to push him and, and get his innings up for sure. I think it, it's the kind of game, it's like you felt like he deserved to be able to go back out there and get a chance to either get a win or, you know, give us a chance to score again because this stuff was still good. So um, it was one of those you felt like he deserved that, you know, what he was able to do to that point, he deserved to be able to, to hang in there for another inning. 